Okay. So who can tell me what this group is? Whoops, let me get my pen out here. What this group is right here. Yeah. Hardware. That's right. And what is this group over here? Software. Right. So we got to figure out how the two communicate with each other. Anybody have any ideas? Programs. Programs. What about that word that's at the bottom? Inputting, right? All right. So we use something like a keyboard, and um, we input the data. All right, so copy this down. We input data and interact with software by typing commands such as naming docs, selecting options, and saving. So I'll write this down. Input and interact. I'm abbreviating hardware and software, okay? With software by typing commands such as naming documents Selecting options and saving. So, what input device do we use to select objects? Mouse. Mouse, right? Another piece of hardware. All right. So, inputting, put a box around that. We use those hardware items to input the data. So, inputting, the definition is the process of using an input device to enter data. Okay, give you a second to write that down. Software. Software is programming code written to provide instructions to hardware so it can perform tasks. Instructions being the key word here. Now remember last lesson, um, lesson one, we talked about how software instructions, they sit in the RAM um, so that the CPU can then fetch them and process them. So step one, we're starting with our input device, which is like a keyboard which is a piece of hardware. We input our data into the RAM, right? And then in the RAM is also the instructions. The instructions of the software. So the CPU pulls the data and these instructions and it processes everything. After it's processed and the instructions are executed, it gets sent to the other p extra piece of hardware out here as output. And this is hardware. So we have hardware, software, hardware again. Now another example of something like this would be, let's say we use an input device such as a scanner and we scan a picture into, let's say, Photoshop, which is our software. And then we send that, that picture back out to a printer or, let's just say, a monitor. Okay? Now, your book, ha your textbook has an analogy. Um, they say that the hardware is like a, an actual book, like a textbook with pages and ink in it. But the software is like the words and the ideas. So you have to have both. So quick review. 
we use our input device to enter our data and then we combine that with our software instructions and then the CPU takes our data and our instructions, it processes the data and then it gets output to an output device which is hardware. What is going on with this stuff here? This is not the right slide, right? Yeah. Is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. So, how the software works. Um, if you were trying to explain something to like a small child, something complex, you would ha literally have to be extremely specific, right? Uh, I, I want to explain this child how to start my car. All right, I want you to get a key. That's not the right key. I want you to get the specific key that goes to my car. Then you need to unlock my car. You need to open the door, sit in the seat, put the key in the ignition, and turn the key. But you can't just turn the key. You have to also make sure that, um, that you give it gas and something like that. You know what I mean? So algorithms is what the computer uses. Um, there are rules that they set up, okay? So they're step-by-step -step instructions. So programs, um, if anybody takes a programming course, you're going to end up doing things like this. You'll say, let A equal 5. It's kind of like what we did last, um, you know, a couple weeks ago with lesson 1. Let B equal 2. And then what you're going to do is you're going to program. So your first step would say add A plus B. Your second step would say let X equal A plus B. And then your third step would be let Y equal X divided by 3. All right, so these are the algor algorithms, the, the step by step by step. And now remember the ALU, the, that's the component that executes these instructions. Where you got that? All right. All right, so software developers. <clears throat> Right? So we're on software development now? All right, software development, a multi-step process that usually begins when someone recognizes a need to perform a task more effectively using a computer. Okay? So software performs a task. So step one for software development is, what do we just do? Create an algorithm. which is a very big task to do, all right? The next thing they do, oops, I can't spell, is create a flowchart. A flowchart looks just like this right over here, okay? It shows different paths that the program will take. So it's just a series of uh, directions and decisions. So in this example, they're starting, they design, they do all their coding, they write all of their stuff out, then they test it. But what happens if there's an error? Where do they go? They need to see, well, here's your, your triangle, your diamond is your, is, your, is your error question. If there are errors, you go one way. If there's no errors, you go another way. All right? I remember having to do this in a programming class in college, and it was torture. Okay? So creating your flow chart so you know if you come to a decision, what are you going to do when it's one thing or another thing. Okay. Let's see. Number three is writing your program language. Give me an example of program language. Google. Yeah, very nice. Basic. Basic. 
Another one? There's another one that Mr. Matiga teaches here. I think, I believe he teaches C++. Okay. So after you're done writing all of your program language, then the computer's translating the computer language to binary, which we also went over last lesson. Which part of the computer does that? Translates the computer language to binary? Control unit. Control unit. Good job. All right, so. Last step is quality control. We're calling it beta. Have you ever heard of when a software program releases a beta version? Actually, we're going to, we're going to, um, do the Socrative thing today with a be the beta version. A beta version is really just a testing, it's a testing environment. Yeah? So like for a game, they would release it early. Right. Like yeah. So they release a beta version, and that way, sometimes you don't release it to everywhere, everyone. Sometimes you only release it to a select group of users. Mason, turn it off. And that way you've got these select users figuring out what errors and things there are. Okay. And that way they can spruce it up before they release the full version to the whole public. So beta is quality control. And, you put, and it's software development for evaluation. Anybody ever used a beta? Program? Yeah. What was it? As a beta? Well, like not as the actual evaluating part, but I got the pre released one. You got a pre released one? Okay. You got it before everybody else? All right. It might not have been totally allowed, but. I'm not, I didn't ask all that. It's all good. What did you get, beta? Battlefield 4. So, did you guys get uh, notice any bugs or anything in it? Crash. Did yours? All right. Now, so did you, was there a way for you guys to provide feedback to them no, when it crashed? Much, I just to use it. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, he would go to, to the website and report what his errors were. And that's the whole point of the beta testing. Okay. So, there's two different kinds of software we got application software, we have system software. Application software helps you pe perform a specific task. Does, can anybody tell me an example of application software? Think of an app. Apps. iMovie. iMovie is an application. I'm thinking rather than on a mobile device, but I'm thinking more of, but that's fine. Like so she's so saying iMovie. What's that? Like calculators on computers. Well, I'm thinking of maybe Microsoft Word. Right? Right, but um, what else? What are other applications that we use, that we buy usually, that doesn't always just come on our computer? Virus software. Virus software, right? Virus like Norton, maybe? You got PowerPoint? All right, so you get the idea. There are things that we purchase because we want to perform a specific task. We purchase iMovie because we want to make movies. We purchase Word because we want to write papers or write articles. Um, we purchase Norton because we don't want viruses on our machines. PowerPoint because we want to make presentations. All right? Now, we also have system software, a group of programs that coordinate and control resources and the operations of a computer system. Okay? So system software is a little bit bigger. You need it. Things like iOS 7, things like Windows, yeah. Now, what are these? What are these things? Operating systems, right. 
system software, system operating systems, and other things like that are like utilities. Now, system software, let's, let's make that the foundation here. And above it, we place the application software. Because we can't have any application software on our computers, right, if we don't have the operating system. Right? Right, okay. All right, so the application software, which we already discussed, um, helps you perform a sp specific task. We already went into these. Um, this software is productivity software. You also, you have the ability to modify and apply rules to, this, to the data in the software. You want to produce something, like you're going to produce a paper, you're going to produce a presentation, things like that. Okay, so one way to... Um, Give you an example of how to modify the rules is um, if you open up your books to module 1 115. I want you guys all to do the step by step 6.1. All right, that's application software. System software, we're breaking it up into um, three components. Number one, operating system. boxes around these. All right, so the operating system is the interface between the user and the computer. And what kind of interface do we guys see? Do we see? Remember, like, we called it a graphical user interface? Oh, the GUI. Right. Because the old operating systems didn't have a nice interface. We have the nice graphical user interface. All right. It also contains drivers that communicate with the hardware and provide the GUI. So we discussed the drivers that, so when you plug in your printer or you plug in your monitor, that you don't need to put in a separate disk so that your computer can understand it. So your operating system is built in with these drivers. All right. Yep. Between. Sorry, I'm abbreviating. Contains drivers that communicate with hardware. provide a GUI. Now it also communicates with the applications. Okay. Another section of system software is utilities. These utilities help maintain the computer hardware and software. Utilities like this, they only perform one task. All 
All right, so remember me telling you I was looking up um, why my computer was so slow, and it was the RAM. Like, I noticed that the RAM was, like, way, it was maxed out. I was looking at the disk utility for that, okay? And then we've got language translators. This translates computer code to an exe executable program. So you see how system software is necessary for a computer to operate. Um, but in order for you guys to like produce something meaningful and helpful to you guys, you guys use the application software. Any questions? Okay. If we didn't have so many restrictions on your computer, we could go and look up some of these things. You can get around you can get around them. Do you want to get around them? Show me. How do we buy our software? Right? We discussed ownership and licensing, right? So, on your computers at home, do you guys own Microsoft Word? What? Who said yes? Tell me how. <laughs> right, you have a, so a software license. And a license is it's just giving you're buying permission to use the program. All right. <laughs> All right, so at home, you guys buy a single user license. We call that an end user license agreement. End user license agreement. I'm not going to write it all out, but you may want to. It just means you can have a single copy on one computer. That's most common for homeowners. Now, here at school, we don't buy a single copy for every single computer in here, do we? No. We buy network licenses. Why would we want to buy network licenses? What are the benefits of doing that? What's that? Alex, say it out loud. You're buying once, but how many licenses am I buying? I am buying a lot. What happens usually when you're buying a lot of something? Cheaper. Cheaper, right? Right, so the cost per user is cheaper. So if I wanted to get a single user license that cost me five dollars um, but I needed to get like ten of them I said oh you know do you guys have a you know a, a network licensing price that you can give me um, and they'll say oh yeah instead of instead of giving you five dollars a piece we'll give them to you for like three dollars a piece okay and they actually usually end up buying licenses in five user increments So, I've got 20, how many people? Let's say I've got 27 people in this classroom, but I want to buy a network license. They're not going to sell me 27. I can either buy 25, a bundle of 25, like, in, you know, 5, 5, 5, and 5, and buy um, two extra individual ones, or I can just buy 30 licenses, thinking, oh, yeah, maybe um, next year it might expand. You know what I'm saying? So you buy them in, in chunks of five. And um, the people that usually buy network licenses are schools like us, government agencies, and corporations.
All right, so the last method of distributing software is software as a service. A lot of times they just call it, um, you know, you, if you were looking it up online, it would be like S A A S. Software as a service means that you don't have to install anything on your computer. It's a web application. So it's an internet option for using your software. Can anybody give me an example of software as a service? Evernote. Very good. What else? Dropbox, another better one. <coughs> right? These are all applications that you don't necessarily need to install on your computer to use. You can just go to a, a website and do it. Any other examples? How do you check your email? Outlook, right? Okay, and actually all of these specific examples that you just gave, they do have, um, they do have, sorry about that. They do have client versions where they can be installed on your computer. Okay? Now, software as a service is becoming huge. It's very fast growing, right? Why do you think a lot of people like it so much? It doesn't take up storage. It doesn't take up storage on your computer, right? Yeah, it's Alex? It's accessible everywhere. Yeah, it's accessible everywhere. Yes, you're right. They have people with multiple devices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Quinn? Right, it doesn't take as long. It's there and it's easy. Why do you think our network guys on, um, on the third floor down the hall, why do you think they would like something like this? Why do they like... When we buy software, like, like Kurzweil, for instance, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Kurzweil. It's... Um, What's that? You don't have to install it to every single computer. You're right. You don't have to install it on every single computer. And what else? How does that help them? It, like, shrinks down in their offices. Like, it's stuck. And that's also, so when there's a problem with Kurzweil, Kurzweil has to fix it. Kurzweil has to fix it, right? Right. And when there's an update to it, Kurzweil handles that. We don't handle that. So it's time. It, may, it probably costs more. Actually, I was just in a meeting yesterday for for something and they give you two options sure you can have the the software here in your office here um, for one fee but if you want it hosted outside um, it's gonna cost that much more and when you host things on a web server at someone else's location it you have to usually pay an annual fee for things like that but you're paying for hey you know do I want to waste my time having to deal with this that kind of thing that's why they cost more That's it for lesson six. So, next class, I'm going to probably, because we don't have, we only have ten minutes. No, we don't. We've got more than that. All right, how about this? We have more than that. Okay. We have more time. I'll tell you what we'll do. Everybody. Okay, so freeware. It's copyrighted, which means you, remember copyrighted is, if you break that copyright, it's against, against the law. Um, they're giving away for free. Shareware. You download it from the internet, and it's for free, but only for a trial period. All right? What they want you to do is they want you to get hooked so much that you love it, and then you want to buy it. Bundleware. Give me, somebody give me an example of bundleware. Bundled with the hardware purchase. What? Microsoft Office. So you, a lot of times you're going to buy your computer and they're like, oh, well, do you want Office as well? That kind of thing. You get home version or professional version and things like that. Um, software piracy. Somebody tell me what software piracy is. 
Very good, you can read! Right. So, in other words, if you were to take music and copy a CD, that's piracy. Copying a DVD, if anybody uses those still, that's piracy. All right? Any questions about these four different methods? All right? So open source, the programmers are just creating something and they're giving it away to anybody and they can change it, modify it, do whatever they want to it. Yep. A rematch? Maybe we'll do a rematch. We'll see. Maybe next class. I might do a closed note rematch. We'll see. Can we log on? I know. He was using his notes. Yeah, go ahead and log off.